Well, let's get started with real-time GIS. And one of the things that we've talked about in the workshop uh, is the use of real-time GIS for what's called event mapping. So what is an event? Well, it's different than feature mapping, where you're mapping a building, something that stays there all the time, and maybe uh, it changes its footprint or, or something like that now and then. An event is ephemeral or transient. It only lasts a little while. Something is happening at some place, and that place can move over time. Usually, when you're doing event mapping, there's no time for review, reconciliation, posting, uh, synchronizing, these sorts of things. Instead, uh, there's some urgency to it. So events are spatial, temporal, ephemeral, and as I already mentioned, often urgent. What are some examples? Well, some examples that uh, immediately come to mind are things like emergencies, uh, a wildfire, an, an earthquake, any sort of emergency that might uh, involve police or uh, fire response or an ambulance. Geo tweets, just someone saying something uh, on Twitter about an event that they're participating in and they've added a geographic location uh, maybe automatically to that tweet and those things are called geo tweets. There could also be current conditions. Uh, what is the weather at my house? Gee, it's really snowing and so I want to post that and share that with other people. What is the stream flow? Some information could be coming in an automated fashion from a sensor, a stream flow gauge um, and so um, that information could be gathered by a machine and automatically updated uh, every couple minutes, every couple seconds, every hour, whatever, uh, however it's set up. Alarm statuses. Hey, the back door of this business is unlocked. Or th what is the status of that back door? It is locked or it is unlocked. Those sorts of things. Are you ready to do some real-time GIS? Well, let's get started. The first thing I need to do is to create a, a folder that is going to contain my geodatabase, my file-based geodatabase. So here I am, I'm working on my local machine, my workstation, uh, in the folder where I do all of my GIS work, and it's simply the C Data GIS folder. I'm going to create a new folder within that, so a subfolder, and I'm going to call it Real-Time GIS. I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to position this window a little bit to the side here so you can watch what's happening uh, on the Windows uh, side, uh, really on the hard drive, while I do some things uh, with our catalog. So here we are in our catalog. This is the real-time GIS folder that we just created. And inside this folder, I'm going to click New. I'm going to right-click and create a new file geodatabase and this one I'm gonna call I'm gonna call it my events geodatabase now inside this events geodatabase I'm gonna create a new feature class and this feature class is going to be called my restaurants feature class and so the event that we're gonna be mapping will uh, simply be kind of a this geo tweet idea uh, that uh, we're going to make this thing available for anyone to collect uh, an inf information about a restaurant in our community. They can put their ratings on it and all this good stuff, kind of have some fun with this thing, uh, and it'll have a timestamp associated with it, uh, and so on and so forth. And the cool thing about it, of course, is that it's in real time. So uh, as people add their observations about a given restaurant, their ratings, and so on and so forth, um, it'll automatically be updated to this file geodatabase so that everyone else can take a look at these ratings. Uh, this is going to be a point feature, and that's all I need to do on this, uh, on this page of this wizard. The uh, feature class is going to have or use a WGS 1984, that's the datum, Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere. 
Uh, this is the geographic reference system. It works very well, has very nice performance uh, on, on the internet, um, so it's fast, those sorts of things. Uh, not good for measurements, for performance, it is very good. This is, by the way, can be found underneath projected coordinate systems, world, and then you'll scroll down down near the bottom of it and choose WGS 1984 Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere and then we do next and the rest of this now the tolerances uh, default configuration keywords sure that's just fine we're gonna click next and now we get to the field mapping page of this wizard and I'm gonna create a few new fields in here uh, right now the first one I'm gonna do will be called restaurant type and I'm gonna make this into, into a short integer uh, field uh, that later on I'm gonna use as a subtype field where zero uh, will be shown to the user as other one will be a fast food restaurant two will be a family style restaurant and those sorts of things and we can go on and on and on and make all different restaurant types uh, it'll be stored internally as a short integer, so very, very small data type, but it'll be shown to the user um, in a very user-friendly text uh, type of uh, format. The next one, people might want to add uh, their rating. So my rating field, this will also be uh, a short integer. And what I'm thinking is this rating field will be how many stars do you give this restaurant or this meal that you had at this restaurant one through five stars or zero through five stars something like that and the last run the last one I'm gonna create um, or one of the last I'll create will be a cost rating not I'm not asking people to tell us exactly how much they their bill was uh, at that restaurant but would you give this um, is it an inexpensive restaurant to eat at so maybe a one dollar sign as you see oftentimes on these uh, on these uh, type of um, restaurant reviews would you give it two dollar signs or a five dollar sign this is an expensive place so again we're gonna do short integer here and uh, we're gonna allow people to add some freeform notes that'd be text and we'll, we'll apply an alias to this one to make it even more user-friendly my notes and we'll limit the length of those notes that in this case just a 25 that should that should the very last one I want to put in here is a date time field when did you visit this restaurant so this will be a date field and we will apply an alias to this as well and we're just gonna put a slash in here date and time date slash time I couldn't I can't put that slash in the field name because that's a special character and uh, um, most likely it would cause me trouble when I'm trying to actually use this. So uh, I'm now going to finish this. I can always come back and add additional fields later on. I can make some changes to those fields. I can change the field names at any time. And I can even change the data type up until the point that I actually start collecting data. So if at this point I want to go back in and change the data type from short integer to long integer, I could do that um, because there's no data uh, that has been entered into this feature class yet. 